Right, so main event day. Just arrived out here at the venue. Can't beat it. Literally feels like Christmas. I'd imagine it's a similar feeling to like what you get. Playing the main event, it's not too much like it. We're a little bit late. Missed the first level, but they play 100, 100, and 100, 100 big blind anti, so it's like a 300 bigs. Decent week so far, we got eight and the six max for 2.3k. We've won some money in cash, so hoping this is where all our run will be used. We'll see you at the tails. What's happening everybody, it's the Irish man and we're here with the Irish Open main event, day 1A vlog. This is my favourite event ever to play, everyone in Ireland comes out for it. This year we had a record breaking prize pool, it was 2.5 million in the prize pool, 2,500 players came out and forked out the 11.50 entry fee for a shot at glory in the oldest running poker tournament outside of the World Series of Poker main event in Vegas. So I'm absolutely buzzing for this one. Our day 1A table was pretty decent table. Bar, we had one absolute end boss at the table in Connor Beresford. If you've never heard of him, he's one Connor B1 online, he's like plus 70 million in online earnings. He's an absolute sicko and a beast. Go crack though for the day. This table was very interesting. I've never had a day 1A table like it. We had a round of straddles for the last two orbits. Everyone agreed to put out blind raises dead. We were all drinking Guinness, so stick around if you want to see the madness. So let's go. We've just took our seat blinds. 100 100 this is 60 minute levels 30k starting stack lots of play so let's get into the first hand in the first hand under the gun one opens to 300 at blinds 100 100 with no ante the cutoff makes the call and the button makes the call i look down at ace eight of hearts in the small blind great hand to squeeze here we block some of the stronger hands we don't want to do too much calling out the small blind but i think this deep it's definitely reasonable just to flat when we can make the nuts with the nut flush but we're not going to flat here we're going to squeeze we make it 1600 to go and only the original raise are called so we're going to heads up to a flop here flop comes 433 with two diamonds so we have two overs here but we are going to have the range advantage so we're going to continue with a c bet we continue with a small bet of 1500 and he sticks around Needing some help here going to the turn, but it doesn't arrive. It comes to nine of spades, bringing in the second flush draw. I think we have two options here. We could check or we could bet, but I think early in the tournament here, I'm going to want to put some pressure on. I think we can fold out some better ace highs that take one off on the flop. We can also fold out some pairs like sixes, sevens, eights. I think early in the day, they're not going to want to call and face big river barrels. So I think barrel in the turn makes a bit of sense here. We can shut down on a lot of bad rivers. We fire out about a 4k and under the gun one quickly mucks his card. So nice to get a bluff through early and start adding to our stack. Day one is all about building, trying to grow your stack for day two. In this hand, we look down at the best hand in poker, pocket aces under the gun. We're going to raise this one up. We make it 600 to go before the cutoff makes the call, the button makes the call, and the small blind makes the call. So heading four ways to a flop here. We've got the bullets. Let's see what happens. Flop comes down, queen, a three, rainbow. Very good board for us here. We definitely have the best hand. We're only losing to some sets, but I think we're going to comfortably have a value bet here with aces. We fire out a bet of 1,200 when it's checked to us and to our support prize everyone wants to hang around and see a turn no one wants to fold just yet and we're heading four ways again to the turn turn now comes to five of hearts small blind checks and now we have a decision between checking and betting i think the merits in betting is that we still can get value from a lot of worse hands out there and i think if we do face a raise we can 
pretty much assume that we're in a dicey spot. I don't think people are going to go too wild bluffing at the four players. And also, the argument for checking is that we're very deep. We're 300 big blinds deep here. There's four of us in the pot to the turn. Someone can certainly have a set. So I think there's merits to both. I think early in a day 1A in a tournament like this, I think taking the pot control line is going to be fine. We're stupid deep here. So I don't mind doing either. But this time we decide on a check. Cut off fires out a bet of 3.5k. The button and the small blind fold, and we obviously have an easy call here with pocket aces. We call the 3.5, and we're going heads up to the river. River now comes the nine of hearts. It's a pretty bad card. Jack 10 now gets there. Some of the backdoor flushes now get there. So I think we're going to check it on over here and just check call the river. Maybe sometimes he value bets a worse hand. He also can have some bluffs. So we're going to check it over and call a river bet. We check it on over to him and he checks it back. We're first to show because we're left of the button. We turn over our pocket aces and they are good. So interesting to see what he had there on the turn, I think. If we bet the turn, if he has a queen, he probably calls. And then the river's quite dicey. We're probably checking the river anyway. So not sure if we get too much value by betting the turn. I think the outcome probably ends up being the same, especially on the nine of hearts river is quite bad. So I think best outcome there. We won a decent sized pot. So we're cruising here day one hopefully it continues we're now at the 100 300 level and there's a limp in under the gun too we look down at pocket nines in middle position we're going to ice them here and raise this up we make it 1200 to go the small blind makes the call the big blind makes the call and the early position raiser makes the call so we're heading four ways to a flop here again we seem to be going multi-way every time people don't like to fold flop comes down jack five three rainbow so we have an under pair to the jack. We may have the best hand. I think when it's checked to us, we want to fire out a small C bet here. In multi-way pots, it's just good to fire out small bets. And I think this hand benefits a lot from getting some just random like queen x to fold some random king x to fold hands with over cards to us and we can definitely get value from worse pairs so i don't think we want to go too big we fire out about a 1k into 5.1 which looking back at it now i think it's just slightly too small i think 1500 is probably a better sizing the small blind makes the call and the big blind now decides to raise and raises to 3.5k the under the gun two player folds and now we have a decision we're getting a really good price here to peel we're quite deep with the big blind player i think maybe we can just take one off i don't really like folding just yet it's a small enough raise the small blind is probably going to come along as well so i decide we're just going to call and see a turn see what happens we make the call and the small blind makes the call so heading three ways to a turn here and bink it's the best feeling in poker. There's nothing like turning a set. You just can't beat it. We turn a set of nines. We're fucking loving our life right here. Now, we're hoping that the big blind has a big hand. The small blind's still in there as well. We have the potential here to win an absolutely massive pot. Small blind checks. We're hoping that the big blind continues firing, but unfortunately, he checks to us. So, that's kind of annoying. He obviously would never check a set here on the turn. Maybe he has a hand like ace jack, king jack that he raised. And with the small blind being in the pot, who can certainly also have a jack, I think we're going to want to bet the turn here. Don't think we need to go massive. There's 15.6k in the middle. Don't think we want to bet like two thirds or more. We definitely don't want to see folds from Jack X. We want to make sure that they call and at least see the river. So I think a half pot size in here looks decent to me. We fire out a bet of 8.5k. And to our surprise, the small blind calls and the big blind folds. So interesting that the check raiser on the flop is now out of there. But the small blind is still in. I think probably has a bunch of Jack X here that we're hoping to stack on the river. River comes, not the cleanest one, it comes in offsuit 10. Queen Jack or Queen King does now get there, but as played, I don't think the small blind should have too many King Queen. The flush draw didn't come out on the turn either, so he shouldn't have, like, if it, if the turn brought a heart and he had King Queen of Hearts, that's certainly a hand he could have. But it was a rainbow turn, so I think we essentially just have the nuts here. He checks it on over to us, and we're going to go for it all. He only has about 28k behind. We want the entire stack. We want to add it to our stack. So we put them all in for his remaining 28k in chips, and he goes deep into the tank. At the time in my head, I was like, he must just have Ace Jack. He doesn't know what to do here. And it's kind of hard for me to be bluffing as played. 
don't think I'll get to the river here with many bluffs, and I don't think I'm going to just bluff off in this spot against two players when I get raised on the flop. It's You'd have to be a sicko to find that many bluffs here, so I'm probably, I'm probably just waiting to value, but I'm not sure if he knows that. And... To our surprise, when he's in the tank, I hear him say something about pocket fives. And I'm like, right, there's no way this fella has a set and hasn't called yet. But he starts mumbling to himself. He starts talking and reveals the table that he does have pocket fives. And in my head, I'm like, fuck, is he actually going to fold when I set over set someone? Like, usually when you get set over set, you just get stacked or you stack the other player. Let's see if he's capable of making the fold or if we're going to get paid in this set over set spot. <laughs> I really be the best player at the table. <laughs> this yeah. is what's not making me go. I'm gonna fold. You're a mad man. Oh, wow. get some new subscri subscribers here, <laughs> <guy. laughs> Well, we can sense. find out, can't we? Yeah. You're watching on the channel. The only thing made sense. Well, you want me to show us anyway, and we can find out. <laughs> I feel disgusted. I can't believe I didn't get the rest of his stacks. It's such an amazing foul, so shout out to that player. He was uh, a friendly guy all day. He was good crack, an Irish fella that had sat light in, so that's an amazing foul. I can't believe I didn't get the entire stack here when I have a set of nines and I set over set someone, and I turned the set, which that's what makes it even worse. So hats off to that fella. That's a great foul. I was at actually very tilted I didn't get the rest of the stack. I think in game... I said that I had two pairs just to try put them on tilt and maybe get the rest of the stack in the other hand, but I'm not sure if you believe me, because if you believe me, I don't think you would have made the fold, so great fold. We're chipping up nicely. This is about as good as a day one can go so far. Hopefully it continues. We have two and a half starting stacks now, or just under. Blinds are now 200, 400, and the hijack raises to 1k. Button makes the call, and I have ace 10 off in the big blind. I think this is a decent spot to squeeze. I like to squeeze out the big blind and generally play some more three bets in the big blind. People really underuse three bet in the big blind. It's so easy just to call and see a flop when you're getting a good price. But with this hand, ace 10 off, it's not going to perform too well out of position. Against two other players, we do have some reverse employed odds when an ace comes out. Sometimes players have a better ace. I think, though, with the blockers... We block some of the strongest ASAX hands. It's a nice spot to squeeze and just take down the money pre-flop. So we make a 5.3k to go. The hijack folds and now the button goes all in for 12k. He's an older gentleman. We're not liking this. I think he set the trap pre-flop. But we can't fold now. We're getting too good of a price. We've priced ourselves in. We're hoping that the ace is at least live and we should have 30%. We make the call and he turns over pocket kings. He played us like a fiddle there. He put out the line and reeled us in, got us to squeeze and ended up getting us all in for his chance at a double up. But with how we're running today, we're hoping we can spike an ace and that's exactly what happens. We spike an ace on the flop to bust the fella. Sorry about that, but that's what happens. Don't slow play your kings and let me get in there and get it in bad and get there from behind. So, yeah. Going our way so far, we're liking this. Day ones aren't usually as good as this, so let's see if it continues. Blinds are now 200, 500, and I have a pretty healthy stack of 85k. Filling this hand has a stack of 60k. I look down at the bullets again in the low jack. Feels like we're getting them every hand today and open to 1100. The high jack calls, the small blind calls, and the big blind calls. So we're heading four ways to a flop here. We've got the aces, and the flop comes 953 with two spades. Get checked to us and we fire out a bet of 1500. The hijack makes the call and the big blind and the small blind both get out of the way. So we probably are more happy to see the hijack make the call. He's not going to have two pairs. Occasionally he'll have a set, but the big blinds can definitely have some of the two pairs on this board. So we're very happy we're going heads up with him. Turn now comes the two of clubs. Pretty much a brick. He shouldn't have any hands that that complete some straight. So we're going to continue going for a value. We fire out a turn barrel of 6k and he makes the call. River now comes the queen of diamonds. I'm going to bet here for value again. Keep firing. We're going to choose a meaty size. He's hung around for two streets. So we can get value from a 9x here. Maybe a non-believing pair. If he puts me on a hand like ace king, ace jack. So we're going to size up here and fire out. 
13.5k for value we get pretty quickly called which is always nice we turn over our hand and it's good for the winner we just keep chipping up we've just went one way today and it's up very rarely do you get day ones that go this well there's still two levels left so hopefully it all doesn't come crumbling down Everybody, meet Boris. If you're looking for a Moldovan to spice up your life, this is your man. This man is an absolute legend. Bought in the second last level at day one. Jumps in, 30k starting stack, first hand, all in blind. Queen 4 off, gets a double through Ace King. Next hand gets it all in blind, 7 8 off, doubles up again, has a 100k stack in two hands. Says to everyone at the table, who wants a Guinness? Disappears and then comes back with a tray of Guinness. This man really spiced up this game. This is the reason we had blind straddles under the gun. They were actually dead raises and the game just got so out of line. There was a crazy hand he played. Was covered on poker news. I will show that after this hand. But he really made things interesting. One of the most fun players I've ever played with at a poker table. Buying everyone drinks. Cracking one-liners. So what a legend. Boris, if you ever see this, I know you probably won't. You don't got time for poker vlogs. He told us he hates poker, hates cards with letters, only plays cards with numbers. But shout out Boris, you are a fucking legend. So I'm going to freeze frame when I'm talking because I want to keep as much as Boris's table talk in the video. It was legendary. But in this hand, blinds are now 400, 800. And Boris surprisingly folds his first hand that he has folded in like 20 hands. Which is kind of odd. Maybe he just wanted to tuck into his Guinness. We look down at Jack 10 of Hearts. Certainly going to open this one up here. And we make it 1700 to go. Only the button calls and we go heads up to a flop. There's no race yet. The big oh, one is the race. Oh. <laughs> now you have the fold button. Uh, I just had two aces. Fuck it, yeah. uh, don't like them. I just take two. Shit hand. Shit hand. Give me numbers. Seven, three, <laughs> four, six. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Numbers don't give me a skin. Yeah, don't like it. Numbers. Give me a sweater. Flop comes down queen a5 with one heart, so we flop a good shot and a backdoor flush draw. We're going to have a big range advantage here, so we're going to want to be doing lots of betting. We have way more of the stronger hands than the button should have, so... I'll have some guns. You're a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> Another hand keeps stop starting, but Boris bought everyone Guinness. He deserves to be the man of the hour, the star of the vlog. We continue for 1200 and the button makes the call. Hoping for some help here on the turn. And we get a decent card on the turn. It comes to the ace of diamonds. It doesn't help our ha hand directly. We do now pick up a double gutter. Any king now makes us a straight. But it's very good for our range overall. And if we look at the button's range here, he's not going to have the strongest hands, which is ace king, ace queen, aces, queens. So given that we have a massive range advantage and not advantage, here i think I, I like firing out a big over bet here we can put tons of pressure on all his queen x hand like pocket nines all these hands are gonna have a tough time making the call so i think we're gonna go with a meaty over bet here and we fire out a bet of 12k into 7.8 and he pretty quickly relinquishes his cards <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think you can really stop it. <laughs> <laughs> So at this stage in the game, Boris was straddling. They're not straddles, they're dead raises under the gun. But he was sticking it on every time he was under the gun and got everyone at the table to agree to straddle for the next two levels or for the rest of the day. How can you say no to a man that is piling you full of Guinness? So we all obliged. It ended up making this table just get so out of line, so outrageous. I've never seen that before. An entire table at the end of day one of the big main event, a 1K event in the festival to all just agree to straddle it's kind of outrageous but it's kind of the shenanigans that happens at the irish open it is a unique special event and shit like this it's just gonna happen before we get into a hand i want to show one hand quickly on poker news that caused a load of chaos and it was because of the straddle there's an open and late position i can't remember the raise size but the straddle was to 1600 so it was say four or five k 
Connor Beresford just rips 45k in the small blind. Boris snaps called the 45k, which is still over 50 big blinds. Like we're at 400, 800 with one more level to play, and the original raise are called. Flop comes. Queen 7-2, and Boris just piles in the stack. So raise are called, and the hands get tabled. Connor Beresford's in the lead in the small blind. He flopped top pair with Queen Jack. The legend that is Boris. Snap called pre, and piled it in with 7-3 of spades for middle pair. And the original raise are called off with pocket trees. It's absolute lunacy. I've never seen a hand like that. Maybe Boris is just ahead of everyone else. I never thought of that. He's playing the game on another level to what we are playing. So, we have a lot to learn from Boris. It's come out of Is that on the fucking blood? Oh, I want the safe one, right? I want the safe one. What is this? That queen wait for us. What is this fucking thing? You believe it or not, I started this by opening it. You wouldn't believe that. Anyways, back to our hand. Boris has the 1600 straddle on. It's 400, 800. We have a stack of 120k. The villain in this hand is playing about 110k. So we're both quite deep, especially in the tournament. I think the average is only like 60 at the time. We open King Jack of Spades under the gun 1 to 3500. Middle position makes the call and it folds around to Boris. And you know he's not folding. He comes along for the ride. So this hand could get very out of line. This is a straddled pot, deep on day one in a 1k event flop comes down an absolute gin one we just flopped the nuts which is kind of outrageous this is just how good we've been running today it comes ace queen 10 with one spade and boris is in the pot too and he's liable to do anything so we could win an absolutely massive pot here boris checks i check and a middle position player fires out a bet of 6k boris folds noting that middle position is a uh, Toy player, in his own words. He'll probably admit himself that he was. He was a nice fella from England, but he had... Every time we've seen him stack someone today, he just said it over pairs and stuff like that. So, I make the call. I'm pretty happy here with this situation. Turn now comes to five of spades. We pick up the nut flush draw to go with the nuts. So, we have the nuts with the redraw to the stone nuts. So, this is just dream scenario shit going on right here we check it on over to him again and he fires out about a 15k and i think usually we wouldn't really want to be doing any raising here we have the nuts and we also have a redraw to the nut flush so i think calling and letting people bluff or like calling and then check raising the river is the play but i remember in the hand just thinking that this player was tight, and I figured he's not betting the flop and barreling the turn big here without a hand. I just don't think he has any bluffs. So, in game, I decided maybe it's better to raise here because if I just call and we end up making the flush, or it ends up coming a card that brings a four card straight out there, he might just check back the river. So, I decided I want to go for it now. I'm going to raise and then jam the river. It's probably a mistake because I know generally you just want to check call here. I don't think raising is good. We don't even really have bluffs when we raise here, so I think we should have check called, but in the end, we end up check raising to 40k, and he makes the call. River now comes an offsuit deuce. Absolute brick city. We're loving this now. We're going to stick them all in for the rest of his chips. We jam, and he goes into the tank, and looks like he wants to call, but he starts talking, Says he has ace queen, and we're just thinking, is this another time today someone's just gonna make a massive lay down to us and be right? Our reputation must be terrible around here, everyone must just think we're a fucking nip. But he eventually falls ace queen face up. He's been waiting for two weeks to see the vlog, he wants to see what I have. If you're watching, mate, you can see you made a grey fold. I just had the nuts, but how did you not pay me off? Please, will someone just pay me off? But another massive pot. Nearing the end of day one, we're absolutely in cruise control. We have 180k now. We've like 3x average, so that's always a dream. So that wraps up day 1B. We end up finishing the day with 180k, well over our average. I think we were 14th in chips coming through our flight. And it's nice because now we can head to the bar. We don't need to come and play the Friday to try make day 2 on Saturday. We can have a day off tomorrow, make sure we come into day 2 relaxed. But pretty awesome day one couldn't have dreamed of a better day one just every bluff we got through at work we just kept making massive hands like we probably didn't even finish with as much chips of as we should have because we seen an outrageous fold from fives and ace queens so just one of them days we'll take it not every day is like that in tournaments even if we wish it was 
there were so many more hands I could have shown, but but it would take five logs just to get through day one. They were the biggest parts or most exciting hands. I thought everyone would enjoy this video. It's probably a bit longer than usual. So if you enjoy following along with the main event, please smash the thumbs up button. Give me a subscribe. Really helps out with the channel. We're going to be back soon with day two of this Irish Open main event. Two and a half million in the prize pool. 360k up top. It's absolutely massive. Thanks for tuning in. And before we go, I can't leave you without letting you know what happened to Boris. I'll play the clip here. Uh, Connor Beresford straddled under the gun and Boris went all in blind next seat over before any cards were dealt and busted. Yeah. Straddle. <laughs> straddle all in. Don't do it. Don't do it. I don't want to leave this table because I like you guys. <laughs> Sad to see him go. His stay was short and sweet. I'd love to play at a table of eight Borises every day of the week. Really made this day one super fun. That's what the Irish Open is all about. And I so I will see you at part two. Thanks for tuning in.